Hi, welcome to the sixth episode of Understanding EEG. This is Imad Al Alim, Biomed Researches, Middle East Medical Information Center and Directory, Epilepsy Awareness Program founder and publisher. In this episode, we will talk about what machine record brain waves, the diagnostic application of EEG, what is shown in the EEG recording, who can read the EEG, and the clinical use of EEG. So let us start the show. First of all, if we can recall back what we have learned earlier, we will know that the EEG machine is the machine responsible for recording the brain waves. It monitors the electrical activity of the brain and it has got a normal PC with a monitor keyboard and basic components and an amplifier connected to the PC. And from the amplifier side, we have electrodes connected and to the other side where it is hooked to the patient head. These key, I mean, these electrodes are connected according to the International 1020 Electrode Placement System or the Extended International 1020 Electrode Placement System. So what the, these electrodes do, they pick up the signal produced, produced by the electrical discharges of the neurons in the related areas of the brain where they are connected and display it on a connected monitor where the doctor can see it and review it. The resulting, the resulting EEG tracing with its record of electrical discharges, provides a record of activity in key areas of the brain during the period of the test. Meaning that if we have connected the electrodes to the patient head, we know that the patient head is divided into four lobes. Each electrode connected to these lobes will refer the activity of that lobe, which, which bears a meaning for the doctor who will review it and he will know if the patient is normal or abnormal and if there is an abnormality with the patient in which area of the brain the abnormality is generated. So the basic principle of the EEG machine is just to monitor and record the electrical activity of the brain. So if we go further we can see here this is a modern EEG machine and there are different types of EEG machines, by the way. There are video EEG machines, there are clinical EEG machines, there are ICU monitor EEG machines, and this is an example of ICU monitor EEG machine. And as we can see here, it consists of only a trolley, a monitor which contains the PC, everything inside it, and there is a camera to, to, to record the patient during the EEG exam or test. So what is the main diagnostic application of EEG? We have known what is the EEG machine, what, what it does exactly, and what type of brain waves it records. So let us know what is the main diagnostic application of EEG. The main diagnostic application of EEG is in the case of epilepsy. So 90% of the cases, as far as I know, the patients are referred to do EEG uh, tests if there is a suspicion of epilepsy. It means if the pa uh, this means if the patient family or the patient himself comes to the doctor and they said, okay, our patient or our son, whatever, had a kind of seizures, shaking, clonic tonic, the doctor takes the history from them and to verify if the patient is normal or abnormal, he asked him to make an EEG test. And by the way, I mean, not in all the EEG tests, even if the patient is abnormal, we cannot guarantee that in all these tests, I mean, it will show that the patient is having a problem. It might be, I mean, the patient might be epileptic, but his EEG might be, I mean, normal. So in this case, the, I mean, the doctor might ask even, I mean, the patient to have something called uh, long-time monitoring or EMU, epilepsy monitoring, or he might, I mean, ask the patient to stay one week or two weeks. It depends upon the case and the number of frequency of seizures the patient had. So the main diagnostic application of EEG is in the case of epilepsy as epileptic activity can create clear abnormalities on a standard EEG study. So if the patient is epileptic, the doctor asks to make an EEG for this patient, and luckily, the electrical discharges, the abnormal electrical discharges, was shown during the test, or was appearing during the test, then the doctor will have uh, enough information to diagnose the epileptic place of the patient or type, and then give him a medication accordingly. A secondary clinical use of EEG is in the diagnosis of coma, encephalopathy, and brain death. You will notice that, I mean, many patients or many guys who had an accident, for example, and they, I mean, they're, and after that, sometimes they had a coma, sometimes they, they get unconscious. Doctors ask them to do EEG. So as a secondary clinical use of EEG, it can be used, yes, of course, in the diagnosis of coma, in cases of encephalopathy, and of course, in cases of brain death, to monitor the brain activity. Because in most of these cases, brain death cases, 
you will find that I mean the patient is on machines on ventilators which gives him life support the EEG cell generates some type of waves and the doctor is always wants to see if this patient continues to be in a complete state of death uh, case or his EEG in, uh, improves it can give them an indication actually EEGs can also help to identify causes of other problems such as sleep disorders some the people who has problems during the sleep apnea or whatever and changes in behavior as well it can be used to evaluate brain activity after a severe head injury or before heart heart or liver transplantation so we have known now that the clinical diagnostic of or the diagnostic application of EEG can be used mainly on the diagnosis of epilepsy, but a secondary use of EEG is in case of coma, encephalopathy, brain death, as well as in case of sleep disorders, changes in behavior, and evaluating the patient case before uh, transplantation. Either it's a liver transplantation or a heart transplantation. EEG is used to be a first method of diagnosis of tumor, stroke, and other focal brain disorders. But this has been decreased. Why it has been decreased? Because of the advent of anatomical imaging techniques such as MRI, CET, uh, CT scan, CPET, and other, uh, other types of MRI. So what is shown in the EEG recording? The EEG shows patterns of normal or abnormal brain act electrical activity. We know that the EEG machine records the spontaneous brain activity. So whatever, whatever, if the patient is normal or abnormal, if the brain electrical activity is normal or abnormal, it shows that some abnormal patterns may occur with a number of different conditions, not just seizures. So I mean, abnormal patterns might not be only because of seizures no there are other causes for example certain types of waves may be seen after head trauma stroke brain tumor or seizures a common example of this type is called slowing in which the rhythm of the brain wave is slower than would be expected for the patient's age and level of alternance it means i mean the patient in normal cases he should have a specific type of wave with specific amplitude and frequency in, uh, in, common, in, uh, in a common example for such as stroke, brain tumors, or head trauma, the patient will show slower waves as supposed to be according to his age and level of alternance. Certain other patterns indicate a tendency towards seizures. It means that we might record an age of a patient and it might appear that this patient has a tendency towards seizures or to have seizures. Your doctor may refer these waves as epileptiform abnormalities or epilepsy waves. These include spikes, sharp waves and spike and wave discharges. Spikes and sharp waves are in a specific area of the brain such as the left temporal lobe indicate that if a patient is having a spike or sharp wave in the left temporal lobe for example this indicates that this is a partial seizure, might possibly come from that area. Primarily, generalized epilepsy, on the other hand, is suggested by spike and wave discharges that are widely spread over both hemispheres of the brain. We have known that the, the human brain is consisting of two hemispheres, the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. So, if, as, if spike and wave discharges are widely spread in both hemispheres, the left and right, this might suggest a primary generalized epilepsy and a primary epilepsy also can be uh, a sign if it, it, it occurs or it happens at both at both hemispheres at the same time and this is uh, an example of an EEG test as we can see here we'll go into details in our next episode on this and we'll have more ideas about them so now who can read the EEG if, we, if you remember in our last episode, we have talked about the neuroscience, the neurophysiology, the clinical neurophysiology, and the neurology. Uh, the, the reason behind explaining these sciences for you was just to give you a step towards understanding the EEG and towards understanding who is responsible for reading, diagnosing, interpreting the EEG signals. The EEG is read by a neurologist, optimally, one who has a specific training in the interpretation of EEG. So not all neurologists, by the way, are able to read the EEGs unless they are having a training on the interpretation of EEGs. This is done by visual inspection. It means he looks at the EEG recording, he looks at the waveforms, 
and he decides if this patient is normal or abnormal. And this is also again another shape of EEG and we can see here so there are some abnormal waves. We'll go in details in our next episodes on these. So now if we talk about the clinical use of EEG, what is the clinical use of EEG? Routine EEG, routine EEG meaning that it is from 20 to 45 minutes, it is typically used on to distinguish epileptic seizures from other types of spells such as because there are some other types of spells such as psychogenic non-epileptic seizures there are seizures which are considered not epileptic seizures so the routine EEG machine the routine EEG test is typically used to distinguish either epileptic seizures from other types of spells such as psychogenic non-epileptic seizures fainting subcortical movement disorders and migraine variants some people who has migraine their doctor might refer them also to do to to do an EEG exam a routine EEG is also used to differentiate organic encephalopathy from primary psychiatric syndrome such as catatonia it's also used to serve as an adjustment test of the brain death to prognosticate in certain instances in patients with coma to determine whether wean anti-epileptic medications so it is a mind with her to wean anti-epileptic medications. LTM. What is LTM? LTM stands for long time monitoring and it's also a routine EEG which is also a type of routine EEG but not in the sense of time. Meaning that a routine EEG stands from 20 to 45 minutes. And long time monitoring it might take more than 12 hours or one day or two three days. Depends upon what is the doctor requirement. For the case for the case in specific so if we say that a routine EEG may not be sufficient particularly when it is necessary to record a patient while having a seizure in this case the patient may be admitted to to, to the hospital for days or even weeks while EEG is constantly being recorded along with time synchronized video and audio recording it means we are putting the patient in a place we are hooking all the extras to him the patient while sleeping while relaxing while talking while moving while even sitting in the bedroom is being monitored by video as well as audio and in this case a recording of an actual seizure can give significantly better information about whether or not spell is an epileptic seizure and the focus in the brain from which the seizure activity emanates so I mean it can give a wide idea for the doctor about where the spell or seizure have started with the patient epilepsy monitoring is typically done to distinguish Epileptic seizures from other types of spells, such as, as we said, psychogenic non epileptic seizures, subcortical movement disorders, and migraine violence. And it's also used to characterize seizures for the purposes of treatment because there are different types of seizures. And as we said, seizures can be originated from different parts of the brain. And as there are different types of seizure, there are different types of medications. So each type of seizure has the medication which better fits it. That's why epilepsy monitoring can help us to characterize seizures for the purpose of the treatment, to localize the region of the brain from which a seizure originates for workup of possible seizure surgery. So if uh, a neurosurgeon is required to make a, a surgery for a patient who was not responding to medications or his case needs a surgery, so in this case an epilepsy monitoring will help to localize where the seizure is originated or to localize the region of the brain from which a seizure originates so that I mean the neurosurgeon can perform the surgery on the specific lobe of the brain or region of the brain. Additionally, EEG may be used to monitor a certain procedures such as uh, depth of anesthesia and also it can be used as an indirect indicator of cerebral perfusion in, cart in cartroid and detrusectomy. EEG can also be used in intensive care units of brain function monitoring to monitor for non-convulsive seizures, non-convulsive status epileptics, and to monitor the effect of sedative anesthesia in patients in medically induced coma of treatment of refractory seizures or increased intracranial pressure. So by now, hopefully, we have understood the clinical use of EEG, what are the machine used to record the EEG, who, who's able to read the EEG. We'll see you in the next episode. We will, where we will talk more and further about EEG and meanwhile please stay tuned and if you have any corrections, comments and feedbacks you may kindly contact us at 
our email address info at biomedresearches.com and you are most welcome to visit us at biomedresearches.com as well as our epilepsy awareness program. Thank you and have a good day.